Hey guys, it's Cadence again. It's me and yeah, I'm back. There's something I have to address here and I am setting the record straight. Many of you used to shut me down, torment me, bully me, and all of this happened throughout grade school and public school. But now we are adults and there's a lot I have to say and it's my time to speak and I will be heard by those who are watching. My sisters, ending with E-R-S. Even after all these years, many of you still don't like me and don't like what I stand for. Well, and with this I say for the record, I do in fact like and stand up for and with black women. However, I stand up more for values and not but and because that cancels everything I said before in the previous sentence, I also don't care what you all think. <sighs> I am entitled to my opinions, my thoughts, and my truth. And I'm not on my platform to be liked by social media and to be some large influencer who stands on absolutely nothing, who lacks substance. I know some of you don't like me because I speak as a woman with class and dignity and that is how I was raised. And I know some of you were not raised right. And for that same reason, you lack this and you hate what you don't have. My sisters, you also tend to hate those who go against the grain and who don't roll with the flow. Well, I'm sorry to break it down to you, but, and I meant this as a conjunction, by the way, I am not one to roll with the flow. And I do go against the grain because I choose to live and stand in my own truth and I choose to stand with my own political views and with what I deem as logical and common sense. Some of you really resent this about me because, let's face it, some of you lack logical and common sense. And it shows by the men you sleep with, by the men you choose to have babies with, I choose to live my life and to form my own path. And this does not come with rolling with the flow, which many of you tend to do. I know some of you love wallowing in unwed motherhood and while pining for the love and affection and attention of your deadbeat borderline baby father, whatever, baby daddy, whatever you call it. Um, and that is your ultimate life goal. And you really don't want more for yourself. And because I am speaking from my own values, many of you resent that because I am in fact free. And many of you are not free. See, I choose to be free. And that's the thing, you have to choose to be free. And you can, you can be free too, but you just choose not to be free. And you really don't want much. Well, maybe you want some wick, some Section 8, a new bonnet. Oh, maybe a few baby fathers that you can take to court and get child support from. Oh, and uh, some Chinese food. And my sisters, many of you resent the fact that I speak my first language, English, well and properly. You see, I like to enunciate my words. I like to use verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and pronouns in its proper context. I like speaking in a way that everyone can understand and that it doesn't take an urban dictionary to grasp what I am saying. And I like books, real books, 
yes, real books. They do. They still exist. Um, and I've always liked books and not just the ones written by Terry McMillan or Corinne Steffens or even Jada Pinkett Smith. I am talking about actual books, my sisters, and not scrolling on social media, reading for dopamine hits, or I, I just don't consider that reading at all. I, I really don't. Um, oh, and yes, I like to hear myself speak. You know that's bogus right now, bro. You know it's bogus. You can't even look at me like a man because you a bum, bro. See, this is an outrage. Mama, I love you. How can they keep doing this to us? It's called hate and ignorance. Golly, yeah, man. Mm. Look, don't get worked up again, baby. This thing is upsetting to watch, but. You gotta keep my wits about us. Yeah, baby, but I'm just tired of this. Huh? I know you're too. Oh, no, I'm just. Okay, so hold on. No, you're fine. He's not responsive right now, bro. No, bro, look at him. He's not responsive right now. You see, with him coming in here, that's our son. Just adds fuel to the fire. It's upsetting. It's disturbing. I know. It's time. I think he's ready for that talk. You're right, babe. You're right. I'm going to talk to him, okay? There's water. Please. I'm about to die, you see. Relax. Man, I can't breathe my face. Let's get up. What do you want? I can't breathe. Please, the knee my dick. Come here. What's up, man? Yeah, son, we need to talk. Yeah, yeah, we can. It's just that I'm kind of in the middle of something right now, so. Excuse me? <sighs> All right. What I do now? Oh, you didn't do anything wrong. Just want to talk to you about something. You and my breaking up? <laughs> no, why you say that? I mean... Y'all keep shushing each other every time I come in the living room. Y'all been doing that for the past couple nights. We don't want you in our business, son. You got another thing to focus on, like cleaning up this room. But there is something I want to talk to you about, though. On a serious note. All right, all right. I think I know where this is going. I know all about sex, all right? Ma told me about it last year. <laughs> yeah, I know she did. I'm not here to talk to you about sex, so. Not this time anyway, but we will come back to that subject. But no, I want to talk to you about racial profiling. You heard of that? You know what that is? I heard of it, I ain't never really know what it meant. Okay, in a nutshell, racial profiling is when one suspects another of committing a crime based on the assumption of that one's behavior or characteristics, and these assumptions are typically aimed at a specific racial ethnic group. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Like when our neighbors thought we were thugs when we first came to the neighborhood. You know about that? Yeah, I know about it. I also knew that they held a meeting against us. Do you believe that? Who told you that? My friend Stacy lives across the street. She told me about how her parents had a welcoming committee in which they wanted to vote. Mr. Peterson is her dad? Okay. Nice man. Nice family, too. Now, they welcomed us with open arms when we got here. Mm -hmm. Unlike some of the other ones in the neighborhood. Because they profiled us. Yeah, I know. But unfortunately, you're going to run across that a lot. That's not going to be the first time that happened. It's not going to be the last. You're going to be driving soon. And it's time for us to discuss the rules. The rules of the road? We already talked about that in the driver's head, though. No, I'm not talking about the rules of the road, son. I'm talking about the rule of engagement 
in case a cop pulls you over? I'll make sure that I always have my seatbelt on. I'll always drive the speed limit. And I definitely want to take some drugs. All right? Yeah, I want you to do all that too. But I need you to understand what you need to do in case you're pulled over by a cop for being black. They can do that? Ain't that illegal? It needs to be, and it should be, but it isn't. Now, unfortunately, it's going to take a lot more protests and votes before we see change. I mean, we are in the capital of the Confederacy here in Virginia. All right. So what should I do if I should ever get pulled over then? You might want to jot this down. First off, be polite and respectful. How you doing, Leo? I'm fine. I'm going to need to see a license and registration. You get way more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. What the fuck you pulling me over for, man? I ain't do nothing. Sir, I'm going to need you to calm down. I'm telling you, I ain't do nothing. What about and keep your mouth closed and less spoken to. But one of the officers being there still tells me though. Should I defend myself? Stop looking at me like you're hard. Excuse me? You heard what I said. Boy. No, don't argue with the officer. Remain calm. Just tell me and your mother and we'll file a formal complaint. Because you need to remember this. Anything you say or do will be used against you in the court of law. I've heard that in some court shows before. So I guess they're saying it is real, huh? Oh, yes. There's been instances where a cop reported feeling threatened and that he had to shoot the driver. Oftentimes, this tends to, to black drivers more than we like to know. See, this is why we got to be extremely, extremely careful and smart while driving. The goal here is to get home safely. Now write that down. Dad? Dad? Yes. Is there anything else I need to add to Yeah, and keep your hands in plain sight, son. Keep your hands on 10 and 2. Don't reach for anything. Don't make no sudden movements. You don't want to give them a reason to shoot you. But what if I need to, you know, record the officer on my phone? Don't reach for anything. But dad, I can see. No! But dad, look, I can- Sir, I'm gonna need you to step out of the vehicle. No, fuck that, I ain't stepping out of shit. I know my rights. He's reaching for something. He's got a gun! Boy, don't you hear me talking to you? I said don't reach for anything. They'll use that as a reason to shoot your ass. Yes, sir. Philando Castile was reaching for his license to give to the officer and they shot him seven times. See, social media ain't gonna keep your ass from getting shot by the police. I mean, people are gonna repost and they gonna retweet, but what good is that, son, if you did? Remember, the objective is to get home safe. Understood? Yes, sir. Look, just resist the desire to reach for your phone or any other object. That way they cannot say you got a weapon on you. If you're on foot, don't run. If they attempt to arrest you, don't resist. But how can they arrest me if I ain't do nothing though? How can they arrest me if there's no proof that I got a gun? Because it happened to one of my closest friends. So one of my friends was driving home late one night and he was stopped by a racist cop. See, not only was the cop belligerent, but he planted a, a small gun in my friend's back seat just so he can arrest him. A friend had to get out of jail? Oh yeah. See, his dad worked for the judge, and because of this, he spent the night in jail, but then he was let out on bail. Mm -hmm. So then his dad hired a, a great lawyer too. And this is a lawyer that was real good. I mean, he really, lost any cases. And I see later it was found that this cop had been planting evidence on black drivers, targeting black drivers. See, the case was dismissed and thrown out of court 
friend was fine. What about the cop? Well, he kept his job. He was placed on probation and had to take some racial sensitivity classes. But that's stupid, though. It's not fair that the cop keep to keep his job and your friend get to spend another job for something he ain't do. How your friend doing now, though? Yeah, my friend was traumatized about the incident. But he's moved on now. And he's living his best life. Wait, 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 wait. So this friend is you, ain't it? Yeah, son, that friend was me. <laughs> I'm just happy I lived to tell the story. Love you, son. Love you too, dude. Hey, Dad. Yes, sir. Thanks for the Okay, my problem with most parents and truth is, many of them are lazy and they don't want to tell their children the truth or simply just saying no. Or in a case with African-American parents, hell no. Well, that wasn't the case with my mother. She simply told me no, because there was no need to put hell in front of that no, because I knew better and you only had to tell me once. And those children who don't know better grow up to be adults who don't know better. And as an adult, you should know better, but some of us don't. And as an adult, you should have common sense. Like for example, it's common sense to pull over if you see flashing lights behind your car when you're being pulled over by law enforcement. The problem is there is a lack of respect for authority and order in today's society. And it doesn't help to have parents that don't want to say no to their kids and they're teaching their kids not to have respect for authority. And it doesn't help that you can't say no or even hell no to some of these kids. <sighs> And they're always trying to appease, appease their approval of their kids as if their kids know what's best for them. I mean, come on. And my God, what, whose idea was it to defund the police? I mean, really? How are we supposed to have order in this society? And how am I supposed to feel protected from children that you refuse to raise? My God. And then we wonder why there is so much confusion. We wonder why there's so many hurt feelings, especially to the woke folk, especially to those, to those disrespectful attitudes and to the children earning awards just for showing up and they didn't do a damn thing. As parents, it is our job and our right to teach our children right from wrong and to teach them better. But unfortunately, another problem here is that you have adults that are doing the right things by their children, but we have to carry the weight of those adults who are not doing the right thing by their children. And I am sick and tired of carrying the weight of those parents who refuse to raise their children. I'm sick and tired of carrying the weight and load of those parents who are concerned with their children's feelings or who are just flat out lazy when it comes to parenting. And they're so concerned with their followers on social media. It's disgusting. I just want to know who is the child and who is the adult? We really need to differentiate the difference between who's the child and who's the adult. It just doesn't make sense. And and particularly with African-American parents. <sighs> Hate to break it to you, but there is a jail cell waiting for your kids with their name on it or rather their inmate ID. Because guess what? They're the ones that are going to get locked up first. Sad, but true. Sorry to break the news to you. Those are my two cents. No justice, no peace. 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 No justice,
Phone us for a reason. What is it you want? I'll answer that one. Personally, I choose to stay neutral in the matter. Same here. I mean, this is my boy. And this is my boy. You've been best friends since what? Preschool? Nah, it was kindergarten. Yeah, because we both sat next to Kim. Remember Kim? Oh, big booty Kim. Yeah, how could I forget? Yeah. <laughs> Can't forget that. Oh, ever since she had that baby last summer, she got enough booty for the whole graduating <laughs> class. <Yes. laughs> I'll take this one. We don't see color. Mm -mm. Why? Because I don't like picking sides. I don't want to pick sides. I mean, friendship, love, music, culture. That should transcend color lines. Yeah, I mean, why is it always black against white? Or white against black? Yeah, I mean, either way, we're all human beings. Our blood bleeds the same color, we breathe the same air. We eat, sleep, shit. And die. <laughs> what? Okay, what's up with all the questions? Yo, what kind of dumbass question is that? No, I'm not racist. I'm not racist either. What kind of question is that? No, we, we like I said, we choose to stay neutral. We don't have a stance on this racial shit. Well, my stance is, slavery was ages ago. My great-grandparents fought and protested during the civil rights movement during the 60s, and there's been some progress since, but not enough. I don't think we're gonna get there by protesting, though. I mean, they did that years ago and the shit didn't change much. That's why I stay neutral. Well, here's why I stay neutral. I got a lot of family that in years past have been divided over racial issues. A lot of them are still divided to this day. I mean, I've had relatives say stuff about black people that I find totally offensive and ignorant. Hold up. Which relatives? None you better know. Take that back. Uncle Ronnie. He dated a black woman for a few years that he referred to as a black bitch after she left him for another man. After that point, he decided all black women were bitches. Your Uncle Ronnie that took us fishing last week. The same one who tried to hit on my mama. Huh. Next time I see him, I'm gonna kick his ass. Go right ahead, I don't care. He's got a ton of people that wait in line to kick his ass. Between you and me, I don't blame his ex for putting his ass. Okay, yeah, but when were you gonna tell me that he felt that way about black women? If he feels that way about black women, imagine how he must feel about black women. Yeah. Bro, I didn't think of it like that. Like, not everyone in your family's perfect either. You're telling me not one person in your family's racist? Not, no. Not one? Not one. I call bullshit. Nah, well, maybe Uncle Kurt. That guy that never says anything when I come over? He don't speak. No, he never says anything. It's, it's odd. What'd he say? Well, he did say the white man is the devil. See? Okay, alright, alright, okay, okay. But your uncle still trying to get a moment though. <laughs> that ain't funny. Okay, alright. I don't want to relive that moment. You tell him. Alright, so a few of us were at the mall, hanging out at a couple outlet stores, and at one point we noticed there was a security officer that No, was... man. That was a cop. Alright. 
at some point when I was a cop was following around some of those stores. Man, if you're gonna tell the story, tell it right. That cop wasn't following you or any of our friends, that cop was following me. So the cop thought my friend here uh, fit the description for a suspect that uh, had been burgling some of the local outlet stores. Fortunately, he was clear, and they caught the real suspect later that night. This is the real suspect. Now, you tell me, does he look anything like me? Huh? Yeah, I didn't think so. Don't get worked up, man. It's over. They, they caught the real suspect. It doesn't matter. You don't understand what it feels like to be followed while shopping, or even browsing at the mall on your own, or even going with a group of people who don't look like you. You don't understand how it feels to always fit someone's description or to be labeled. Yeah, I do. People make snap judges about me all the time. Like, some people say I'm a stoner or a racist. Dude, you are a stoner. You may not be racist, but you love to smoke weed. <laughs> I do. But, but that's not the point. People make snap judgments about me too. Yeah, but you don't get it like I do. They don't follow you in stores, they follow me. And they may have you pegged as a stoner, but they have me pegged as a thug or a criminal, and I am neither of those things. No, you're not. That's why you're my boy. My ace. My nigga. Okay, dude. Now you're taking it too far. Bro, you wasn't taking it too far the other night when we were singing leaving the party. I'm down for my niggas. I don't fuck with those niggas. I'm down with my niggas. Man, fuck them motherfuckers. I, I nigga, god damn. I was repeating the lyrics. Your ass was high. I also told you that night to never, ever repeat that shit to me again. I don't know, man. I just... I don't remember that part. I... I thought it was... I thought we were cool. I thought it was part of the culture. You're always like... I'm about to go hang with that crazy white nigga. Or I'm about to... Hang out with my nigga Ah. Like... I, I, I thought it was part of the culture. I... I apologize, bro. Yeah, man, we cool. Unwritten black law says it's supposed to fuck you up, but... You my nigga. Hey! Hey, see? My boy, my boy. You know what I meant, motherfucker. Whatever, man. You wanna go get something to eat? Yeah. All this talking and walking makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> We're still neutral, though? Yep. Still neutral. This is Richmond, Virginia, former capital of the Confederacy and one of the many epicenters for the Black Lives Matter protests that took place following George Floyd's death. <sighs> the protesting and really the looting of the small businesses was just asinine. I mean, why burn down your own shoe store? I mean, where are you going to buy your Jordans from? And the desecration of our local monuments? Really? I mean, those monuments on Monument Avenue were beautiful. And I wish they would have restored them rather than bow down to public pressure. <sighs> now look at you. All that protesting and you are still in the same position you were in before Mr. Floyd's death. There is so much more I can say regarding the Black Lives Matter movement or this so-called systemic racism. And, and not just here in Richmond, but all over parts of the country that is supposedly oppressing people of color and particularly African-Americans. As an American woman who holds several degrees and who is educated, I firmly believe that African Americans specifically should hold themselves accountable for much of the oppression that they faced over the years. Now, before you hurl stones at me and drag me on social media, let me just say this. I have the right to utilize my freedom of speech on a platform such as this. And I don't care what any of you think. And sure, some of you might look at me and say, hey, she's an African-American, shouldn't this affect her too? Well, 
I think that the so-called oppression and systemic racism only affects those African Americans who continue to make stupid and detrimental decisions consecutively within their communities and in their personal lives. For example, Rodney King, he wouldn't have been pulled over if he wasn't intoxicated or even if he wasn't speeding. And to make matters worse, he refused to pull over when approached by the police. The LAPD wouldn't have had to take drastic measures had Rodney King just complied when given warning the first time. And it's my assertion that many of today's urban youth are engaging in questionable activities that often lead to gang affiliation and or gang violence. So with that being said, they should expect a visit or two from law enforcement. <sighs> they should, they, honestly, they are simply doing their job. And we need that. It, it, sometimes it takes an act of force just to get people to comply. And we need that just to maintain order in our society. And before any of you decide to hurl additional insults my way, here's another thing I must say. We are not a monolithic group of people with a monolithic way of thinking. And we are treated as such because we continue to reinforce and accept that belief. As an American, it is my right to state my views about my society and the many groups of people that live in our country and I'm entitled to my opinion because guess what? That is my God-given right. And I am not my sister's keeper. I'm a keeper of myself. where black people can come together and address the issues that affect black Americans. Our sojourn is very unique, so we just want to create a space where we can just discuss the very dynamics that affect us. Remember, there's just one rule. We will not and do not use the N-word. Are we clear on that? Jamil. All right. Okay, so with that being said, let's welcome our new group member, Tom. <clears throat> oh, wow. I have never been around so many black people in my life. <laughs> I know, strange, right? You think a person like me would understand what it's like to be around a bunch of blacks, but nah. Well, I guess I better get started. Um, I grew up in the dirty south, as some of you say. Uh, my parents, yes, I grew up with both parents, might I add, uh, chose to enroll me in a private school where I was given the privilege to have the best education. Now, of course, I had some haters, as some of you would say. Well, I actually refer to those types as uh, underachievers. And those were often the types that referred to me as a black Anglo-Saxon or proclaimed that I was acting white just because I performed better than many of my urban peers and worked towards the highest level of academic achievement and excellence. And by the way, what is acting white? What does that mean? 
Does acting white mean that a person has the ability to be a, articulate or enunciate properly? That I ask a question, I do not ask a question. If someone is injured, I will call the ambulance, not the ambulance. The number is 11, not 11. <laughs> Look, it was my academic performance that got me enrolled at Yale. And while at Yale, I majored in communications. Pledge Sigma Nu and finished magna cum laude in my class. Pretty impressive, yes. Especially for a man who continued to act white throughout much of his academic career. I, I also dated white too. <laughs> no offense to you black women, but uh, many of you have an impressive invisible chip on your shoulders and I, I find it quite repulsive. <laughs> Oh my God, it is not our fault that you decided to copulate and get knocked up by some gold teeth hoodlum with a beard who decided to bail out on you. I mean, what were you thinking? The guy just needs a late model sedan sitting on rims, as you say, and a pair of Jordans to court you sisters. And it's not our fault if some of you continue to attract and date these hoodlum types. It is embarrassing how whimsically you sisters choose suitors. I know a lot of you will be mad at me for saying this about you, but Kevin Samuels was right. Huh, yeah, uh-huh. And I believe also that deep in your heart, you know it as well. That's why you black women celebrated his death. How sickening. I feel sorry for you. No, I do. I know, you're probably saying to yourself, he probably still dates white girls. Well, the answer to that is no. I am married to a white woman. Her name is Becky. woman with the heart of gold. Her hair and her skin is the color of gold too. She's all the woman I need because she meets my every need and my every desire. You know, you black women can learn a thing or two from my wife Becky or any white woman out there. just to get along. And that's just fine with me. Now I think that's our problem as it relates to getting along in American society. If we can all go along just to get along, we'll be just fine, just fine. Time and opportunities have never been so much better in today's society, I say. I think we got it made. <laughs> opportunities for us continues to get better. We just have to get rid of that chip on our shoulder. I'm a Republican. Not a black Republican, but a Republican. While I fundamentally see things differently from former President Barack Obama, I agree with his second inaugural speech when he echoed Jeffersonian values. That's what we need. The white man is not the problem. You are the problem, black people. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You're embarrassing. Slavery is dead. Slavery is gone now. We are African Americans now. We don't have to act so, so black. 
fuck these bitches, fuck these hoes. I'm getting this money, getting my clothes. I'm selling that rock on that box. Yeah, what? Yeah. Man, Uncle Tom. Anyway, like I was saying, yeah. I was selling that rock on that box. Yeah. I saw me an ox. Yeah. We need to leave that plantation and get away of thinking and shift our paradigm to something new. Something different. Those are my two cents. staunch Republican, I don't believe in practicing in practices such as welfare programs or affirmative action, which in my opinion, its objective is a setup to fail. The way I see it, why hire a person just because he or she is black or any other color if they're not qualified for the job? I think it's better when you just hire someone that's actually qualified for the job and not just if they're black or white or any other color. Hiring someone just because he or she is black is not enough. And this is what hurt our country before and after Obama was elected. Also, what is unfair is hiring someone and they just simply do not look the part. And, and, and a little bit off topic, I must say this. And I know the natural hair thing is the new black. But personally, I would not hire someone who looks unkempt, looks unclean, and just flat out looks unprofessional. I mean... Braids are cute and all, but I feel like braids and locks, there's a place for that. And I feel like that's better suited for a music video. And don't get me started about the Afro. In my opinion, they should have just kept that in the 70s. Again, these are my opinions and my opinions only. And you don't have to agree. You can cancel me. And it wouldn't bother me one bit because I know several others who look like me and they think just like this. The difference is they have more to lose and I don't. I don't have to have millions of followers on social media. In order for me to stand up for what I believe and I refuse to be boxed in with other African Americans just because it's popular. And back to the original subject at hand, wasn't Dr. King a Republican? And no one questioned his blackness. No one questioned his allegiance to African Americans. So why should any of you question mine? <sighs> this is my editorial and these are my thoughts. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, and furthermore, I don't make the rules. I follow them. Uh, yeah, what up? It's right here. A little something to call. Fit me 
you do here? How do you do, Corinne? It's good to see that you still remember my name. Too bad you can't remember the names of our children and the fact that it takes money to take care of them. Instead, you choose to spend money on dumbass shit. Such as just set that DJ in his camera. I'm on video hoes. Yup, yup, that's her. That That is her. I told you, I saw those two this past Sunday at Crabs in a Barrel, eating all that shrimp, crab legs, and lobster tail. Oh, and see right here? See right there? He got his tongue in her ear. I got it all right there. Just wow. nasty. Wow. Wow. Look, I don't know how y'all two got me in this little set for shooting music video. I'm pumping you, y'all. I don't think so. You know I don't give a damn about this. Well, well, well. I see you got the ambiance set. Fake candles, fake flowers, fake Kardashian. I mean, really? You talking about black love matters. No, honey. Looks more like whack love. <laughs> okay. I got some for your ass. As a matter of fact, I think Keisha and I will be staying put and making a video of our own. Mm-hmm. You getting all this? Oh, yeah. Are we live yet? Yep. Okay. I want to challenge you to a rap battle. <laughs> you know about me? Me? Yeah. I mean, you know I does this shit for real, right? I mean, uh, I mean I'm doing the LL Cool J shit right now, but uh, I can go do the Lux on your fucking ass. Kareem, whatever. You whack anyway. <laughs> Black love, Daddy Mac love, Black love, Daddy Mac love. Nigga, are you serious? You're stuck in the 90s. Update your flow. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hold up. Isn't Daddy Mac from the group Criss Cross? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Um, I mean, some you want to tell us, bro. Alright. Go battle. Break this shit. I already have my regrets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you got issues too. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Battle them guys. Let's do this Jake you know what I mean? I'm ready, baby. Go ahead, drop that. You wanna battle me on stage, okay? Let's do this. You just bitter and mad and jealous because you blew it. You blew it with me and every black man on earth. And the team stay bitter, the team stay mad. And you know that hurts. Name it printed on our shirts, so you know that's mine. Cause I moved on from you, and I got something fine. Rounds crossed up and frowned up and mad all the time. Nobody want no mad black woman. Am I lying? Oh, Am I lying? Damn. <laughs> all right, all right, get it there. I got some for your ass. Get it, I got some for I got some for you. Look, gloves on Kareem since you wanna talk ish. I'm jealous of you when you ain't got shit. You say you're mad, you thinking I'm bitter? I'm just mad, you ain't got a fucking job, nigga. So pay some bills first for you or your fucking mouth. Cause the last time I checked, you were sleeping on your mama couch. Strong black like king, my lord. What you are, brother, is a strong black fraud. You just lying to yourself and them too. And that fake ass Kardashian, I'll beat her ass too, bitch. around and get your ass kicked. Nah, seriously, just do the opposite of Nike and don't do it. All right, Kalimba's ass got hands. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we all got hands. No, I mean, hands, hands. <laughs> Kalimba's ass from Great Court. <laughs> you ever been in a fight? Huh, no. Mm -hmm. Don't mess around and get your ass kicked live on social media. Baby. Baby, just have some. Yeah, like a the younger dumb, huh? Yeah, well, I want to like you, so what does that say about you? Uh, uh you know what? The, go get his ass. Get his Man, ass. Shut your dumb ass up. Oh, I know you're hey, not talking to nah, me. No, no, it's okay, Gisha. I got this. I got this. All right. All right. Look. Got his ass whipping. Are you ready, Saeed? Yeah. You mad at a loose dog, baby? That's life. Cause most of you black women, you just can't wife. 
y'all talk too much and won't let a brother lead. This white woman, she gives me just what I need. I love what up in life and my girl don't nag and I hate to brag. But she got a banging body and she getting it bad. So you twice as mad, it's just bossy. With a breath of fresh air, you a bald head, scallywag. She got real hair, oh. real hair, baby. Okay. Man, no shit oh. you get from a Chinese okay, beauty cool. supply store, but some Phyllis, real little shit. Little boy. Oh, I'ma no. hurt your feelings. Let the duck you say that's more last boo, cause I know she pay your weight and your friends' weight too. Little stupid ass will probably pay your child support too. Bossy, I'm not a nag, whatever. I'm a strong black woman and my reign is forever. My ass casts a shadow and that bitch can never hold a candle to me. The original queen. Put the colonizer I like any I mean. Black women talk too much? That's weak. What's a strong black queen if a queen don't speak? Just cause I'm right. bubbling me. It doesn't mean that I'm weak. I could be your PC, you gotta meet me half Way. We can't pay the least for those weak CDs. See, I need me an alpha man, not a beta. Little boy, I need seven inches or greater. If you Ooh. can't handle that, then it's PC. See you later. <laughs> See you later. See you later, little boy. Hey, y'all. Look, I can handle mine, you bitch. You know that's true. We are commodity babies with precious value. So that means I can handle you, you and her too. Oh. So you too strong, black and independent. You look a surprise, but I said it in a minute. Too much reality TV, baby, is no good. You working for the main, trying to get in good. And you're supposed to be taking care of home like a real woman should. You don't cook any cleaning, okay. all that shit, but you don't know right. about that. Cool, whatever. I'm finna re-educate and enlighten his dumb ass. Yeah, do look. it. Commodity implies that you bought a soul. Blacks was commodities, yeah, that's true. But when you leave the black family, the sell out is you. You think that white girl cares about you? I'm the one that's raising children, paying rent. And nigga, who the fuck you calling the bitch? You talk a good game, but get your life. How black lives matter when you don't respect your black wife? Oh! That's right. Wife, baby, not side shake, which is what you are. Whoa. You see the ring, you see the ring, bitch. Whoa, girl, girl, you, you told me that y'all were divorced and that she was keeping away from y'all's kids. Yes, yes, I don't want to fucking hear it, okay? Baby, oh, baby. Stupid, fucking big ass, piece of shit. You fucking kidding me? I fucking hate you. You're disgusting. I have more respect for myself than your small penis. Fuck you. White Nubian queen, no. White Nubian queen. A cool bee. You still rolling? You was rolling the entire time? Uh, yeah. No, I can't believe it. Cut, cut, it, cut it off. Man, cut the motherfucking tape off, man. Man, who the fuck are you yeah. talking to? You got my money, nigga? Like I told you, man. Once, once I go, once I talk to dude, he's gonna Man, be shit. This shit going straight to YouTube. I ain't thinking about you. Come on, man. Give us something, Keith. Get her out of here. 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 As far as Black Lives Matter, my personal opinion on this is that this is a leftist liberal movement perpetrated by the Democratic Party and some major corporations that have leftist views and they seek to gain monetarily from this. This is not a real movement for African-Americans. And the sooner they know that, the better. And. There's so much more I can say about Black Lives Matter and this so-called movement. And I say so-called because it presents an inflated view of self-actualization for African-Americans. But truth is, African-Americans need to take true inventory of themselves. For example, for you black men who are fathers, why aren't some of y'all married to the mothers of your children? Don't their lives matter too? I mean, what about black marriage? Did black marriage ever matter to you guys? And what about the lives of your children? Don't they deserve a fair shake? 
whether you like their mother or not. I don't always like my husband and he doesn't always like me, but guess what? We make it work. We stick together and we make our family work. You want to know why? Because we will look really stupid if we don't make it work and we'll just be another broken family. Besides, you chose to lay with her. You chose to take the chance to lay with her and create with her without the option of using prophylactics. So the way I see it, you should stick by the women you make children with whether you like them or not. Lay in that bed you made with her, raise your kids and man up. And for you black women who are willingly baby mamas and not wives, you, you, you know, you talk a good game about being strong and intelligent, but there is nothing strong or intelligent about keeping the man away from your children. And it's certainly not intelligent to just take up the opportunity to collect taxpayer dollars to raise your children. That doesn't make you strong and intelligent. That makes you lazy. That makes you bitter. That makes you vindictive. And it also makes you a statistic. Because let's be honest here, free money doesn't equate to autonomy it equates to dependence and slavery. Black women, you are better than this. You are so much more better than this. So instead of focusing on getting your hair and your nails done, why don't you prioritize picking better partners for your children? And I mean, pick men who actually want to be husbands, fathers, and actually heads of your households. As far as Black Lives Matter, why not just focus on the lives you see in the mirror every day and the lives you chose to create? Because as a taxpayer, I am so tired of paying for children that I did not create. I'm so tired of it. So if black lives really matter, why not act like it? Did black lives ever matter? I mean, does it ever matter? You decide. Oh, God, I forgot where I was at. Move, move, move. No. Hey, get away from my car. I don't want a pamphlet. It's a V? B. B. Okay, B, B, B. B1. B1. Clap it. Action. Thanks. Act like I'm yelling at him over there. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> well, no, don't yell at him. But just, just in general. Like, if you could just not look at the camera, but look past him and keep, keep that look of passion. So 
happy I got a white wife She's beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous to me I'm so happy I got a white wife I'm so happy I got a white wife White wife I'm so happy oh, yeah. I got a white wife She's beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous to me Black love, daddy Mac love Black love, your body fit me like a glove uh, Black love matters to me uh, Black love, a truth setting us free, free, uh, free, free, free I'm black and white It don't matter cause we both black at night When we cut off the lights, I hold you tight Reverse racism, I'm beating that white ass on sight Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you f uh Yo, man, what happened to my music, man? Get through this. All right. All right, can you see the bath? Yeah. All right. You see the ring. Oh, you ring, she bitch. told you. You yeah. told me that y'all were already divorced and that she was keeping <laughs> you away from y'all's kids. No, I don't, I don't want to fucking hear it. No. Baby, baby, don't, don't do this. Bitch ass. You, you fucking kidding me? You piece of fucking shit! You. Your sex is awful! I want <laughs> nothing to do with you! <laughs> oh my god! Why does it escalate every time? <laughs> Alright, Corinne. <laughs>